Greetings everyone, this is Danny from hardtravel.com, your luxury cruise experts, and today I am on one of the most beautiful ships in the entire world, the Anthem of the Seas. We just set sail a couple days ago from New York, and today we are in Port Canaveral. Wanted to share this amazing ship with you. Right behind me, you have the pool deck. One of the first big screens that they put on there, watching some videos yesterday, I know my daughter loves to come out, they had Toy Story 4 on, fantastic. You've got the North Star behind me, I'm gonna talk about that in just a minute. But in a few minutes ago, this entire pool deck was rocking, line dancing, conga lines, and uh, as soon as that Caribbean beat kicks up, I know that I'm on a Royal Caribbean cruise, I know that I'm happy, and I know that I'm gonna have an amazing week in front of me. You've got your pool here that I mentioned earlier, but I just wanted to point out that what's great is you can sit along the edge and put your feet in, so the water extends all the way around it. Just behind the pool, you have the sky bar. Who doesn't love a pool bar, for sure? You've got two extra large hot tubs right there. Right, and just past that is the family area. Royal does an amazing job with families. You'll see that throughout all the entire spaces on board here. But I love this wading pool that they have over there. It's kind of like a mini wave pool. They've got another splash pad back there. And then of course, who doesn't love a lazy river? Had a pretty good mom Congo line going down there earlier. I may have seen a few of them at the bar first, but who knows? Once again, this is all about family fun for every single member of the family. And if the kids have a blast, you know that everybody else is gonna enjoy it as well. And so as I continue along the running track here, we have one of my all-time favorite features on any Royal Caribbean ship. It was super cool. They reached out to my parents. They called and got a baby picture of me. And uh, well, there I am. Almost an exact doppelganger. In fact, I have that shirt at home. And uh, of course, who doesn't have a pink? Yeah, inflatable, why not? All right, so let's continue on. Just, just for a point of reference, they have one of those on every Quantum class ship. It's a little bit different on each and every one. It's actually a huge, very heavy sculpture, and there was a, a bit of uh, you know, balancing and all the engineering and technology that goes into that as well. Right here, you have your rock climbing wall. It's been a signature on every single Royal Caribbean ship since the Voyager of the Seas. A very, very fun activity to do. This ship is all about active fun, entertainment, and uh, you know everything else that's included, but this is a complimentary option. I love that Royal Caribbean does include that as part of your cruise fare. All right, so now we are at Ripcord by iFly, an unbelievable feature that debuted on the Quantum of the Seas. Yes, you can go skydiving on board your cruise ship, and yes, it is complimentary. So follow me on in. This is also where you're gonna do all of the waivers for everything, so that's gonna include the rock climbing wall, um, and in this case, the flow rider and the iFly. Make sure you check out our full video. We did a full video with it, including some demonstrations from the Royal Caribbean staff, but follow me on in, and then we're gonna head up and check out the iFly. All right, so now I'm at the very top of the aft, and this is the iFly. It is an incredible feature to have on a cruise ship. Our partners at Royal are right around the corner. Don't come in here by yourself ever, ever, please. But just wanted to point this out here. You've got the control panel, you've got the seats here, and then as you come on in, this is the entrance. This is a massive wind tunnel. Uh, they, they usually have it at about 70, 80% for the average guest. They crank it up to almost 100% when they do it, and they do some amazing demonstrations as well. But when you come in here, this is where you're gonna sit down. Everybody in the group will sit here, and you'll go in one at a time. You have a couple minutes each, which seems to be about the perfect amount, because that's about how long a free fall would be anyways. So another fantastic complimentary option is the Flow Rider. On the Quantum class, they have one of the Flow Riders. On the Oasis class, they have two. But this debuted on the Freedom of the Seas, and uh, I was one of the very first people to ever get to do it. It's a blast. Boogie boarding is a little bit easier. Stand up uh, surfing, if you're really good at it at home, of course, you're gonna do pretty well with this here. But you can do lessons, you can do free time, and uh, once again, it's just a really awesome complimentary thing to do on the Anthem of the Seas. All right, so now we're at the very aft of the ship. You have the flow rider just above me. You've got the staircase down. One of the great features of this particular ship is that you have uh, an outdoor terrace area to dine uh, behind the, the windjammer, so that's a great place to be. But I love the aft views. All of the, the loft suites on this ship are in the aft. Make sure that you check out our video. We've got videos of all of the loft suites, and they are impressive. They're amazing, actually. But this is where I love to be. They'll have all the deck chairs set up here in a minute. They just We just got into port, actually. And then uh, turn it around, look out the aft of the ship, and have just a really, really beautiful view. All right, so as we head over to the port side here, you've got Shuffleboard, which is, of course, an all-time cruise classic, way back to the, uh, the super good old days, the 1970s Royal Caribbean even had those on there. And then next, we're gonna head into the Seaplex. All right, so as soon as you walk in the Seaplex, just to the right here, you are gonna have the Doghouse. This debuted on the Oasis of the Seas, and of course, that's the Boardwalk Doghouse, but it's just a great, fast, casual option. I may have had a couple hot dogs over the last couple days here, but they've got the list of everything that you can choose from, so classic Coney Island. I mean, I go old school, but of course, they have uh, German uh, brats and things like that as well. They can add on sauerkraut, you've got some onions, but basically, once again, it's just all about having a hot dog, playing some sports, 
classic Americana, and then of course all of the great Heinz. Well, you, know, you can't have a hot dog without condiments, I'm just saying. The next thing I wanted to point out was the Coca-Cola machine. So you're gonna find these throughout the cruise. If you have the unlimited beverage package or you purchase the soda package, you're gonna get a tumbler. The tumbler has an RFID chip. It actually reads right here. So you set it down, you can get ice anytime that you want. And then it's gonna activate this. You can choose your soda. Uh, basically you can add cherry or different flavoring to any kind of soda that they possibly have. For me, what's so great about that is the best part of a vacation is getting exactly what you want when you want it. You don't have to wait in line at the bar or anything like that. You just pop up, pick the exact soda combo and there you go, happy day. All right, so now we're gonna head into the C-Plex. This is a multi-function space. Right now it's divided up for sports. So you have soccer over here, and then on the far side, you're gonna have basketball. So just some families playing some pickup games, but they do have three-on-three -three tournaments. They have dodgeball tournaments. Basically, any of, any of the fun sports that you can uh, imagine they have. I'm a little bit competitive, and I was lucky enough to travel with my dad and my brother quite a bit on Royal Caribbean when we were younger. We used to always play the tournaments and uh, got a few gold medals, I'm just saying, maybe even a few ship-shaped dollars for those of you old-school Royal fans. A few other things for the C-Plex. Right here, you've got the hovercraft cars. What's great about this is you can go tandem, so you can bring the younger ones with you. Then older kids, of course, uh, can drive themselves if they like. This goes right out here. You can see the door here, actually. They're little hovercraft. Who doesn't love bumper cars? They also have roller skating. So last night in here, a ton of people have, were roller skating. And for me, what I love about this space is that it is indoors. So if this ship is in inclement weather, maybe it's in Alaska, maybe it's in England, uh, somewhere else, it's the perfect spot because you're totally self-enclosed. And I cannot wait to see what they do with it on the Odyssey of the Seas where they're adding playmakers and really expanding the entire space. Because this to me is the perfect cruise space for athletics. So one of the things I wanted to point out is upstairs. You have these alcove areas that are great. You've got an arcade up there. You've got ping pong, amazing views, especially in Alaska. That's one of those secret spots you want to head to. And then on the other side, they have the big Xbox Connect and then more ping pong because you can't go on a cruise without playing ping pong. Right now, I'm gonna head on in, see if I still have my basketball skills. I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage right now because I have a torn meniscus and a, a really bad back. Got a herniated disc, but uh, let's see what we can do. Why not? Nope. All right, bad back, bad knee, got no lift, got to go old school, RB style. There we go. You got to improvise, I mean, when you're broken. So one of the fantastic extra perks that you get with a suite, keep in mind these are grand suites and above, so Sky and Star Class, is you get access to the suite only sun deck. So this is a private area where you never have to worry about seating, very comfortable seating. Before we go, I'm going to just point out here, you have a rainforest shower, giant one up here. This is great, especially as you're cruising through the Caribbean as we're gonna be going in just a few minutes, but that's fantastic to use to cool off. And then as we continue around the space, you'll see that they have mixed seating throughout. So you've got some tables there, and then up here, you also have a mix of different kind of day beds and loungers, and then a ton of loungers all the way around the front. And I wanted to point out that this is a fantastic place for people watching, but also to watch the North Star, because as you're sitting here, you can see it right in front of you. So a couple of fantastic features that they put on here was this glass panel. So they're up and down glass panels, but there's slits in the middle. It's actually a really windy day here. And as you're cruising and going forward, the wind, there's a little bit of a wind break, but you can also scoot your chair over a tiny bit and be right where the wind is coming in. But what this is all about is of course the views. Right now we are in Cape Liberty Cruise Terminal and looking across at New York City is absolutely stunning. I can see One World Trade Center right there. Of course I can see the Statue of Liberty right in front of me and in just a few, probably about an hour and a half, we're gonna sail under the Verrazano Bridge. New York's a pretty special place to leave on a cruise from. All right, so now I'm headed forward and I did wanna point out that this is the running and jogging track on board. I always recommend that you use it early in the morning, later in the evening, because when they put out all the sun deck uh, chairs, it does turn into a little bit of an obstacle course. Just to my left is the solarium over here. And now I'm gonna head to the North Star Bar. So the North Star is an incredible feature. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute when we go up. But I just wanted to point out, this is another great vantage point. It's a fantastic bar area. They've got some really comfy furniture here. There's also the other part of the suite sun deck just in front right here. Once again, super comfy. You've got incredible views. And from here, you can actually see the screen as well. So if you are in a suite, this may be perfect spot if you've got kids hanging out here. This is the North Star Bar, a fantastic pool bar option. It is kind of separate, so you don't find a lot of the overflow from the pool traffic, but just a great place to grab a drink, especially after you come on down from the North Star. So now I'm headed up to the North Star. It's got a bum knee right now and a bad back, so just gonna head in and use the elevator. But I did want to point out that it is accessible for those guests who have accessibility needs, and really big kudos to Royal Caribbean for making that happen. So I'm gonna head in here. They're gonna head up the stairs and uh, 
Oh, see you in just a second. All right, so now we're up at the very top. We're getting ready to head in. Just wanted to point again, once again, you got a ramp right here, perfect for accessibility, but follow me on in the North Star. One fantastic feature is it's tall enough even for me. All right, so our North Star experience has started. A little bit of a, a tiny bit of a drop as they pull the brakes off, and then we're gonna be heading up here in just a second. But there's some things that I wanted to tell you about this unique feature. So it debuted on the Quantum of the Seas. Nothing like it had ever existed. Nothing like it currently really does exist. Right now we're heading up and we're gonna to top out at 300 feet above sea level. So not only do you get incredible views of everything around you, right now we're in Port Canaveral, but you really get unprecedented and unparalleled views of the ship itself. Really the only other way to do that would be to fly over it and uh, you can't really do that with cruise ships. So you can see that we're heading up now. Pool deck is right below me. You can see the big screen TV there. And uh, there's a couple different ways that, or a couple different things that you can use this for. So one is the complimentary access. You have 14 passengers in here. Once again, I think it's fantastic that Royal Caribbean includes that as part of your cruise fare. You're not paying for all of these additional activities, but you can rent it out if you'd like. Uh, we've coordinated to help coordinate proposals in here. Um, you can even add weddings in here and things like that. And then in different parts of the world, they have unique curated experiences. One of my all time favorites is on the Ovation of the Seas. That's the twin sister to the Anthem. And when you are in Alaska, they actually take the North Star all the way up when you are in the glaciers, which is already incredibly beautiful. You've got 360 degrees of window all the way around you. And then they actually extend it over the ship and go down. So you really do get amazing views of the glacier. There's two TV screens in here. One of them is gonna show different uh, camera views. You can't really see it with the camera, just the way the lens is. And then on the other side, you're gonna have information on the North Star itself, the fact that we're 300 feet above sea level, all the little uh, intricate details and such, but it's just, like I said, it, it's such a cool feature. So right now, well, now higher up than you can be on any other cruise ship in the entire world, even cruise ships that are a little bit taller than the Anthem of the Seas. One other very important thing too is this sails a lot in the Caribbean in warmer weather, Mediterranean in the summer. This is an air conditioner. In fact, I'm just gonna stand under there for a second. Love me some air conditioned air. But uh, once again, this makes it incredibly comfortable. Now I've got an amazing viewpoint. I can see, is that the Rhapsody of the Sea? Is a royal ship in the far distance. See another ship here. And then because we are in Port Canaveral, one of the absolute coolest things is Kennedy Space Center. You can't see it out there, but once it, just, just through the screen probably with the camera, maybe you can, but you can see it in the distance. One fun side fact, side note, is when I was on the Quantum of the Seas for the very, very first time, we were in Port Canaveral and the captain was actually able to hold the ship for a little bit so that we could see a rocket launch. So I got to stand right here in this position. You imagine being up in the North Star as a rocket uh, launches over there. All right, so we're gonna continue on along the jogging track towards the front of the ship. To my left is actually the spa, just for point of reference. Just above me is the fitness center. So this is where all the treadmills are looking out over the side of the ship. But the reason I wanted to take you here, you can see we're kind of angling up some unique features specifically on this ship. In the fitness center, there's kind of a deep well in there. But what this does is it takes you up and over the solarium. So not only do you get uh, that extra wind coming in, but you're also gonna get really, really incredible views out the front of the ship. One other great feature of the jogging track are the mile markers here. You can see that's a three mile mark and then this is a quarter mile. But if you start from the starting point, uh, you can pace yourself and figure out exactly how far you're running. Or you could just you know, use a phone right now because I think that's what people do these days, right? All right, so now I'm headed into the indoor pool area here. This has a ton of pool space for a ship this size. In fact, compared to some of their competitors that operate ships roughly the same, I'd say it's double or triple. And the another great thing about this is, once again, if you're on the Ovation or in the Anthem in this case, it's, it was cold when we were in New York, it's gonna be cooler uh, when you're in England before you set, sail into the Mediterranean. So having this indoor pool is such a bonus and a big benefit. You, you can see that it actually opens up completely on the top, it opens up completely on the side as well, so it can be this massive open space, but it, when it closes down, what you have is a true solarium setting. This particular part of the ship is open to families. There's a small wading pool down here for kids. You got two really large hot tubs, and then you also are gonna have a really large pool for an indoor pool like this. I really, really love this space and think Royal absolutely hit it out of the park. And to cap it off, of course, you got another pool bar down there. So sit, have a drink, relax. Kids are playing in the pool. They've got the lifeguards on duty. You're paying attention, of course, and everybody's having a perfect time. 
All right, so now we are in the solarium. What you notice right away is out of the pool deck, there is a lot of noise going on, lots of parties happening. You got the music, belly flop contest. I myself am a multi-time winner. Um, also, Mr. Sexy Legs, I may have won that a few times too as well. I don't even compete anymore, it's just not fair. But uh, you know, fun regardless. But this is the place where you can go for a nice, quiet, relaxed time. And uh, once again, 16 and up, so this is only adults. You're not gonna have all the kids running around, partying, having a good time like they are in the splash pad out there. So as soon as we get in, you have this beautiful glass roof in here. They do have air conditioning in here, which allows for airflow throughout the entire space but it's just a really, really elegant and beautiful space like you'd expect from this ship. But as we continue along, you have this fantastic hot tub. There's one on either side, so there's actually four hot tubs up here looking out the very front of the ship. And then just like on the Oasis class, you're gonna head down the stairs. You can see the extra large hot tubs on either side. Once again, you've got the shower down below and these fantastic seating that's looking all the way out the very, very front of the ship. And then one of the signatures here is the swing out in the front. So you can swing the world away and just look out at the very front. Once again, this is the same exact view as the captain. It's a fantastic view. I don't hear any kids. Kind of calm conversation going on here until you get up to the bar. Down here, you've got these great loungers that are actually inside uh, with, with water down below. So you can sit in them, put your feet in the water. And then as you work your way up, you've got these see-through pools. They're tiered pool area. Uh, so if, you know, just know when you get in them that they are see-through so everybody can see you. Um, but uh, as we continue on up, we're gonna head to the Sunshine Bar. All right, so here is the Sunshine Bar. In fact, the bartenders have some of the best views in the entire world, looking out the front of the incredible ship here. One thing that I love up here is that they have the fresh juice. So if you do get the unlimited beverage package, that's one of the things that you can take advantage of. And for me, having a nice espresso in the morning, nice orange juice is a fantastic way to start the day. But as we continue along to the other side of the Slarium, you can see a lot more of it. You've got a ton of lounge chairs. I see quite a few that are open today. All right, so now I'm gonna head into the Solarium Bistro. Before I do, wash my hands really quick. Just wanted to say that Royal has done a great job putting in hand washing stations. Of course, the hand sanitizer helps, but doing both is even better. It is your responsibility as a cruiser, as a human being, to please make sure that you always wash your hands. It's so now I'm gonna head in to the space itself. The first thing that I noticed is it's really beautiful for a complimentary space. So when this first was introduced, it actually was more of a spa themed specialty restaurant uh, in a way. Now it's breakfast and lunch buffet. So I had buffet here this morning for breakfast actually. It's a great option, especially on boarding day, maybe going really quickly and, and grabbing that as an alternative to the Windjammer. But in, at dinner time, they, they really do a fantastic seated meal in here that is no additional cost. So you kind of get a little bit of that specialty feel, but you don't pay any extra. My favorite is the uh, watermelon and feta salad because two of my all time favorite things, put them together and it's pretty awesome. All right, so now I'm headed to the most important place on the entire ship. Safety is paramount, of course, for sure, but the most important place we all know is the soft serve ice cream. Ah! Ooh. Little on the melty side. Look at that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Got a dripper there. Mm. I don't know if you guys have met my friend Bud. His cousin Wise is over there, and her's over there. So there you go. Bud Wise. Her. These are actually excellent lifeguards because they have their eyes on the top of their head. They recruited them recently. Great job, Royal. Okay, so a signature on every single Royal Caribbean ship since the Voyage of the Seas is Johnny Rockets. It's pure Americana, absolutely delicious hamburgers, apple pie, Alamo, just the way my grandma did it with Tillamook cheese on top. But I believe that the champion, you know, of course the burgers are amazing, but I believe that the champion are the chili cheese fries. Absolutely fantastic. But you can see it's kind of like a, a, a mom and pop 50s diner feel. Uh, Johnny Rockets is a large chain. They do charge extra for it on the very, very beginning when they, when they joined, it was a complimentary option, uh, but just for crowd control and also for uh, quality control, they do charge and it's uh, definitely a higher level than what you're gonna find in any of the other restaurants as far as burgers go. All right, so now we're headed into the Windjammer Buffet. Every single Royal Caribbean ship has one of these. Each ship design that they've come out with, I think they've definitely approved on them. But the best thing that they did on this one, and I'm sorry that they just put them away. I already, well, I might have eaten all of them. That's probably why they put them away. But they put a bakery right here, and they always, when it's open, have fresh, warm, gooey cookies, chocolate, and then today they also had oatmeal raisin. And once again, I came in for 
something else and may have blocked out with a few cookies to my name. <laughs> so one great thing about this space is they've added in all of these separate island stations. So you remember the old school buffet used to have one really long line. So right now they're just putting everything away right now. Um, dinner, that's why we wanted to come in here at this particular time so that we didn't interrupt anybody's meals. But basically you can see each individual stations, this has soups and salads on there. Um, they've got international flavors back here. Right there, just wanted to point out that uh, some of the Indian food that I've had on board this ship has been absolutely fantastic. As we continue along, you're gonna have your pasta station over here and then the meat carvery. So earlier they had a big um, prime rib steam show of beef in there that they were carving up. Over here, well, anyway, this is where I get my, my, my fellow bacon, but you're gonna have burgers and fries and basically Americana. And I did ask them to leave one station open for me. Yes, so excited. All right, here we go, coming on in. That looks like a birthday cake. Anything that looks like a birthday cake makes me pretty happy. I'm just gonna continue eating and walking here as we go. Tastes like a birthday cake too. All right, so as we continue on into the space, I just wanted to point out you have some different seating. We always recommend that you go to the very, very back and then work your way back forward, especially on boarding day because that way it's not nearly as crowded. So I usually go grab a seat and come back and get it. This is one of our favorite booths. We've been in this quite a few times um, on different ships. They always have a big family one. And then you've got bench seating and some of this high top seating. One thing that I totally notice in here is that the decor is, is elevated. So even the chairs, I think, are a little bit nicer than what they've done in the previous ones. And once again, theme throughout this entire ship. I know you're gonna hear me say it over and over again, but it is a beautiful, beautiful ship. All right, I'm gonna put my cake down for a second. I'll be back in just a second. But I wanted to point out the beverage station. So this is a beverage station that you're gonna find throughout the entire ship, everywhere that you can eat or drink. So right there, you're gonna have your cups, water, and ice. You got the Vitality water. Sometimes they'll have uh, strawberry kiwi. That's my favorite. Right now they have iced tea and lemonade on there. You've got your hot water and then all the teas. Once again, everything at this station is going to be complimentary. And then they have the coffees that's just put away because it's later on and the coffee is up front. All right, so now we are outside behind the Windjammer. They've got these great tables out here. This is, once again, my favorite spot. And if you happen to be on the Ovation, sitting here looking out at Alaska, this is actually one of the best places to be when you have the glaciers. So I'll continue along here. Um, did want to point out there's a stairway. This is the stairway that we pointed out earlier that's going to go up to the Flow Rider just up there and also the iFly. But we'll continue along here and you can see a ton of seating out here as well. And uh, when you don't have meal times, this is a great place just to sit play a game, relax, or uh, read a book. My wife also loves this space too because she tells me it has a fantastic light for her sewing. Okay, so just on the starboard side, forward of the Windjammer is the Coastal Kitchen. Our clients absolutely love the Coastal Kitchen. This is a restaurant that's reserved just for suite class members and also those who are Pinnacle members, Royal Caribbean's most devoted clientele. The space is beautiful. You've got these floor to ceiling windows here. You've got a really unique mix of, of tables. So right here, you kind of have an up and down 10, or it could be four, four, and two. You also have the bench seating. And what this is all about is just a fantastic dining option. If you were in a full suite class, you can have breakfast, lunch, and dinner in here. They have a much wider, more diverse option, uh, options than you're gonna find in the other restaurants. You also have the wind jammer just outside if you do wanna pop out and grab something. But I know for me, traveling with a family, this is exactly what I love because everybody gets, to made, get, gets their food made to order. They get exactly what they want. And once again, breakfast, lunch, and dinner and the best restaurant on the ship. All right, so now we're headed into the Vitality Spa and Salon. So right here, you got the check-in desk. That's where you're gonna make all of your appointments and get ready. And then of course, they have a ton of retail here. It is uh, duty-free, so you get a pretty good deal on it. Over here, you have part of the Medi Spa here. And then we're gonna continue on in to the main salon area. So imagine a salon at home, it's essentially that. Basically, any of the treatments that you can get at home, hair coloring, uh, you know, preparation of any type, you can do here. For there, you're gonna get your manicures with course a beautiful view out of the ocean over here you have two of the hair stations and washer right there but once again any of the hair treatments you get at home or if you just want to style it to go out on the town one night on board this is a perfect spot for that so over here you have two additional hair stations and then if you'll follow me right around the corner here this is where you're gonna have your pedicure chairs I love it because I can sit here and look out it's a little bit of a uh, height right there so not everybody can see out but once again on vacation, sitting here, having a pedicure, looking out at the ocean, doesn't seem like a bad thing to me at all. So now we are in the relaxation room. This is the area where you go before and after your spa treatment so you can just get yourself in a zen mindset. We all know that spa, um, anything health related does better when you're in a positive mind space as well. 
right here you're gonna have hot water so that you can make teas, flavored water, and water as well. Once again, sit, relax, fill out any of the paperwork that they need you to do before the treatment, and then just get yourself in a ready position to go have an amazing treatment. All right, so now we're headed into the thermal suite. I love thermal suites at any spa, especially on cruise ships, because it's just another fantastic way to totally relax. I love these stone chairs, hot stone. I've got a bad back right now and a bad knee, so, oh, I might just sit down and move in for a little bit. I'll see y'all. Okay, all right, my bad. All right, let's keep going. I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. All right. So a little bit more about the space. Over here, you have a dry heat chamber. You can think of this as a sauna. Over here, you're going to have the moist or the steam sauna over here. So once again, you can alternate back and forth between them and then use the hot stone chairs as well. And then all the way over here in the corner, you have the tropical rain shower. You follow me on in, you have all of these different, actually there's like six different jets up here on the top. You press the button as you come in and you have cool mist or you have nice warm tropical rainforest shower. Me personally, when I have a room that has a bathtub in it and that's the only shower, I don't really fit because I'm 6'6". So oftentimes I'll use the changing room or I'll use this shower as well. So in addition to everything else that I have in here, of course they have the treatment rooms, every kind of spa treatment that you can imagine. My favorites would be the, the bamboo roller and then also the hot stone massage. Really, really helps with tension. Just show you what one of the spaces look like. This is a couple's massage and I know uh, my wife and I when we do have that time, we've got a little one, so it's really nice to get away. Having a couple's massage is just a fantastic treat. And then I see the, uh, the heater over there in the corner for, like I said, my all-time favorite, the hot stone massage. All right, so now we're headed into the fitness center. Right on my left-hand side, you're gonna have the two private consultation rooms. And as we continue in, you get into the cardio area. So you've got treadmills with some unbelievable views. Right now, I'm looking out and I see the New York City skyline. One thing I wanted to point out is that there is a ton of clearance here. A lot of times I have that problem in gyms on board cruise ships where I can't use the treadmills, the ellipticals and things like that because I'm up my head. Not that I use them nearly as much as I should, but just a, a side note that pretty much any person of any size can use this one. So we're going to continue on. You've got the ellipticals over here, a ton more treadmills wrapping around towards the front of the ship. And then if you'll continue over to the other side, we're going to get into where you have the free weights all the different pulley machines. And then down in front there, they actually have a TRX training studio. And in addition to that, you're gonna have your bikes and cardio. Right now they've got it set up, so they've got classes down there. They teach you about different kinds of fitness. There's all kinds of classes that they'll do throughout. They've got barbells. I see barbells that go up to 90 pounds. That's a really nice, positive thing. You don't get that in a lot of places. Not that I could lift a 90 pound barbell anyways, but if you can, you'll appreciate that. All right, so now we are on the other side of the gym. You see it wraps around. So this is a fitness studio area here. You've got the different balls uh, for stretching. You also have the foam rollers. I love that, especially if my back sore. Get over here, lay down, stretch out on the foam roller, and then the different weights for all of the different aerobic exercises that you can do. And then as we continue on, once again, beautiful view looking out the side. Over here, you've got the different stair steppers and ellipticals. And as we continue on, you have a little bit more of the pulley equipment. One thing that I will point out is that they have towels here for you to use, change them as often as you need. They also have these Purell wipes. Please make sure that you wipe it down before and after you use every single piece of equipment. Lastly, I wanted to take you in here. So this is the last bit of cardio. You have these Techno Gym uh, spinners. So this is for spin class. Got the, it's all interactive. Once again, this is a smart chip. So you've got interactive up there so you can compete with each other. And we all know that when you compete, doing exercise is always gonna be a better workout. All right, so now we're getting ready to head into the Adventure Ocean Center. This is all about kids. What we all know is that on a perfect vacation, every single member of their family has their needs met completely. And I know my daughter, especially when we travel with my nieces and nephews, have her needs met completely here in the Adventure Ocean Center, just like I did well over 25 years ago when I went on my first Royal Caribbean cruise. So the first space that we're gonna talk about is the Royal T Babies and Tots Nursery. So this is a true drop-off nursery area for the 36, or sorry, from six to 36 months. All right, so one awesome thing is when you do drop your kiddos off here, they're gonna give you one of these ship phones. You can use them anywhere on the ship so they can communicate with you just in case they need to because, you know, small kids are small kids. They've got these great lockers here. And then I'm gonna take you in here because this is what's truly a unique feature. Not every cruise ship offers this and not every Royal Caribbean cruise ship offers this as well. So this is the actual nursery. You drop the kids off, they will change them, feed them, um, you know, everything the babies need. In fact, you see that they have the cots here for beds. They also have the, uh, the cribs here as well. And also, 
I mean, everybody knows that you need a stroller. You got to push them back and forth and rock them. They know how to take care of babies. They do a great job. So mom and dad can actually go out, have a night out and enjoy it. I know when we traveled just the three of us and my daughter was really little on ships that didn't have something like this. You know, we, we loved it. We have an amazing time, but we really didn't get any alone time. So right here is the bathroom. They do a great job making it perfect for the kids. I know my, when my daughter was potty training, having everything her size made a really big difference. And then I'm gonna head around the corner here to the play area. So once again, age appropriate toys. They've got quite a few toys that are put away. They do a great job of cleaning this all. In fact, they have a soiled toys area. So, you know, when they inevitably go in the mouth, you know exactly where they're gonna go. But they can sit here, rock the kiddos. You've got a TV for movie time as well. But once again, meeting everybody's needs of the family is a huge thing. And having the six month to 36 months to have a place like this is fantastic. It is an extra charge before 6 p.m. It's $6 an hour after 6 p.m., $8 an hour. But uh, from where I come from, that's a pretty reasonable rate for, for some babysitting services. And of course, they wanna be here, they love what they do, and they're really happy to do it. So now we're headed into the Aquanauts. What I love about this is this is my daughter's favorite place. She's four years old. This is the three to five year old area. What it's all about is fun for kids of that age. They do a great job. They know exactly the programming that they want. I know my daughter, I see all the, um, the art supplies that are all set up and ready to go, the video games, the movies, the books. But essentially what this is about, it's about meeting the needs of every member of the family. And for the three to five year olds, this is the place where they get to party and jam and have a great time. Once again, it's kind of like walking through my own house not that long ago. Over here, you've got a great slide, little area over there. Of course, kids love to hide out and uh, you know, play, of course, but head up there, head down the slide, and I can picture my daughter going up and down there quite a few times. All right, so right next to the Aquanauts is a shared play area. So this is an open play zone. Where this really comes into play is, uh, I know my daughter, we usually travel with my daughter and my nieces and nephews, and when you have multiple age groups, this is just a fun space where they can all interact, and the littler ones can come in here and play as well. Mom and dad can keep an eye out uh, on them in here. But once again, this is not a drop-off area, but this is an open play zone where any and every kid can come in and have a blast. In addition to all of these awesome toys, in fact, I'm looking around, it looks just like my house did about a year or two ago. My daughter was a little bit younger, and now it actually looks like it for sure with the Thomas the Train right there. But you've got a slide, you've got a hangout area. Kids, of course, love to tuck away and find a little fort or hangout. And then up above, you also have the stairs that head up all the way up there. And then you've got more play area up above as well and the rest of the Adventure Ocean Center. All right, so now we're headed into the Explorers. So this is the six to eight year olds on board. Um, once again, age appropriate space. You've got reading, um, all kinds of books. I used to love Ranger Rick all the time. They've got all the art supplies and everything, all the sinks or the kids level, of course. And then over here you've got, well, what kids don't love video games. So all here is all the video games there. Um, and then over here, you're gonna have all the different supplies. You've got your sports, you've got the balls under, underneath there as well. And then over the corner, got some more seating where they can hang out, chill and relax. But once again, all kinds of activities all throughout the day. Your six to eight year olds are gonna love it in here. All right, so now we're in the Adventure Science Lab. Royal Caribbean is really, really good about the right brain, left brain, making sure that there's something to do for every kid because every single kid is different, just like adults are. You're gonna find some that are at the, the party pool, some that are at the quiet pool. It's the same thing here. If you have a science mind, we all know that you can make really, really cool volcanoes here. And then of course, uh, well, static electricity is always fun, but this is just all about kids who love science. All right, so now we are headed into the Voyager space. Once again, I just wanted to point out the check-in area. Every single one of the spots on the entire uh, Adventure Ocean Club is going to have a check-in and check-out. The older kids can check themselves in and out, make sure that you talk to them about it. Always come up here to get it all set the very first day. But of course, the very first day, it's also important to make sure that anybody who's gonna pick them up comes with you to sign them up. That way they can identify them. And of course, you know, safety and security are of the utmost concern here. So they really, really will not release them, even if it's grandma or grandpa, unless you have it all set up. So head on into this space now. Hangout area, of course, love to hang out. You've got books over here. You've got some games all the way over on the other side. You're gonna have all the sports games they play. Of course, you know, dodgeball is a lot of fun. Hula hoop contests. Actually, let's see. Hmm. Let's see if I got it. Hmm. Now, anyway, that's about as good as it gets today. Bad knee, bad hip, bad hula hooping. All right, and so the rest of the space over here are the Xboxes. Fun to play video games. Once again, nine to 11 year olds. I know quite a few nine to 11 year olds. I was a middle school teacher for almost a decade. They're gonna enjoy this and the entire space. 
All right, so now we're in the living room, which is the dedicated teen-only space on board. And in my, my, my opinion, they actually have one of the best spaces on board the entire ship. You've got huge windows looking out the side of the ship and a really, really massive space. So over here, you've got the video games, video game rockers and loungers, different kinds of bean bags throughout the entire space because what teenager doesn't love to fling themselves anywhere on there? I do it right now, except for with the knee. I may never get up. <laughs> right here, you've got some more video game space, foosball table. And then over here, you've got your theater. So it's essentially a you know, tiered theater here with a big screen TV right here so you can watch different kinds of movies. They're also going to have uh, different activities throughout the entire day that are teen specific. And then this space here, there's one on the other side as well, but I absolutely love it. Super comfy. And of course, you got the screen here. Play some video games, watch a movie, look out to my right. Right now I'm looking out of the New York skyline, but an unbelievable view. Really, really good place and space for teens to hang out. Ladies and gentlemen, boys, and, oh, well, never mind. We're in the Fuel Teen Club. This is the DJ booth. They got some good Pioneer gear here, getting ready to spin a tune. What this space is about, it is about letting teens get down, party, have a great time in a safe space so that they have that adult-like experience for themselves here. So you can see this is a huge dance floor. Of course, I pointed out the DJ booth, and uh, we're right next to the wind jammer so they can grab drinks and things and come on in. But uh, once again, another teen space on board, and this is the Fuel Nightclub. So another great space for teens and frankly for everybody, as I see a lot of dads in here like myself, you've got the arcade. So you've got Skee Ball. I did want to point out, you purchase your credits over there. This is an additional cost. Make sure you talk with your kids about it. Have a budget in mind, of course. But once again, Skee Ball here. You got the racing game, so motorcycle racing, car racing. Over here you have the Jurassic Escape, which is a virtual reality style game. I'm guessing we're going to see a lot more of this with Royal and everybody else. Fruit Ninja, who doesn't love that? The different kinds of claw games. And then all the way in the back here, you have more of the claw games over there. And then, well, just more arcade games. So at the very aft of deck 13, you have the conference center. I've had, I've been on a couple conferences on board the Quantum of the Seas, actually. It's a really perfect space for that. It's also a space that you can use for different things. You can rent out um, if you're doing a special event. They have morning prayers over in the corner. There's a group there that uses it every single day. That's another option because all of the cruise ships in the Royal Fleet either do not have a wedding chapel on it any further or will not have one going forward. So they've kind of re replaced the chapel space with this beautiful lit space right here. All right, so now I'm headed into the concierge club. So right when you walk in here, you're gonna have the concierge desk. They can do all kinds of things for you. Maybe it's just making reservations at one of the dining or a shore excursion or something along those lines or even a next cruise. They can definitely help with it. They're what make this space really, really special. But you can see it's just beautifully decorated, large screen TV over there. In fact, I watched the NBA finals on the Quantum of the Seas on uh, that very TV. You've got the menus for all the specialty restaurants that they can advise upon as well as book for you. And as you continue into the space, you can just see that there's a ton of different kinds of seating. But what's unique about this is the massive back window. So it's my favorite space on any ship anyways, is to be at the very back looking out at the aft. And it's such a treat to have a space like this where you get unbelievable views. Over here, I wanted to point out, you got a station to wash your hands. You've got your espresso maker, so you can get complimentary espresso 24 seven here. As you continue along, Underneath, you're gonna have all the fridges because you have the happy hour every single day where you can get beer, wine, and spirits. And then over here, you're gonna have appetizers. I know I've had <laughs> my fair share of little uh, pigs in a blanket and also of the, uh, the wings, <laughs> maybe some mozzarella sticks a few hundred times. But in all of my Royal Caribbean cruises, we've always loved hanging out in the concierge club. We meet so many unique, different, interesting, and awesome people. And the service, of course, is fantastic and can't beat a free drink. So now we are in the Royal Theater. It's two levels. We're up here on the balcony right now. You can see that it's a really, really big space. Balcony seats are actually fantastic. There's very few obstructions up here. Of course, there's a few posts. That kind of thing happens. Uh, but I just wanted to point out, this is where they do the full Broadway-style production shows there. They'll have comedians, different kinds of entertainment throughout. But one thing that you will not have a lack of on this ship is entertainment, because it's throughout the entire ship. Once again, the largest entertainment venue here, the Royal Theater. All right, so now I'm headed into the focused photo gallery. It's just outside the theater. One great thing um, about this ship is that it is a smart ship. It's highly integrated with technology. And I, I must say, throughout the entire cruise, the internet's been really good. I've been pre pretty much able to do uh, work almost as I would at home on the ship. Right here, you have the photo gallery. So all you gotta do is take your CPASS card over there, 
and then it's gonna pop up all of the photos that you've taken. I don't know if you guys remember the old days where they used to print out eight million photos, um, and then you'd shuffle through them and pick one of them. I think this is a much better way to do it, and it's also really nice because it's on demand. You can see them as you go throughout the cruise, and then you can use them to purchase a package or, a, well, you can even get a package with absolutely all of them. Just outside the photo gallery is the schooner bar. So this is Royal Caribbean in my mind. I have not been on a Royal Caribbean ship until I have done a sing-along in the schooner bar and <laughs> had some of the, the funniest, most enjoyable ones that I've ever done in my entire life. Um, Matt Yee, give him a little shout out here. Matt Yee, who am I? Anyway, he, he, he'll know what that is, but Matt Yee was absolutely hilarious. Had the entire bar going for a couple hours with his uh, comedy and sing-alongs. And to me, that's what cruising is all about. It's about having a really, really fantastic time with an amazing group of people. Didn't know any of them. And after a couple hours, I felt like we were best friends and known each other our entire life. All right, so now we're headed into Chops Grill. This is the steakhouse on board. It's a beautiful entryway. You've got this fantastic chandelier, marble floors. Then of course, there's a little uh, ducky right there. You royal diehard fans know exactly what it is that I'm talking about there. This is where they're gonna greet you. Uh, make sure that you do make your reservation ahead of time. I highly recommend that you make those as soon as they come out. And then of course, if you're in star class, you can work with your genie on that. But Chops is a very, very popular choice on board all Royal Caribbean ships that have specialty dining. It's the very original first specialty dining on board. It's an unapologetic steakhouse, delicious steaks. The ribeye is super and incredibly fantastic. Um, also the, uh, the bacon, the pork belly, Really good flourless chocolate cake. I can talk about all the desserts over and over again because I love all of them. But as we go through the space, you see you've got the booths, you've got the different tables. They can put it together even to have uh, tables of 10 or 12 or 14. I've had that in here before. At the very back of Chops, you're gonna have the chef's table. It's just behind this wall here, and it's such a cool experience. To me, it's what Royal Caribbean is all about. We dine there on our very first night on board the ship. We have a standalone video if you wanna watch me eating and uh, drinking my way through the meal. It was, it was just so much fun because we met a new group of people that we didn't know before, and just, once again, had an amazing time with them, and by the time we left, we were planning the rest of our meals together for the rest of the trip. But just a really, really fun time, well worth the extra cost, because it was delicious. All right, so I'm getting ready to go down one floor to the liquor store on level four, find the cash register, and Matt Yee's gonna go cha-ching to buy his comedy CD. I walked up to the liquor store on the fourth floor where my CD are. By the cash register. Welcome to the cult of Matt Yee. I might even get the same wig that he was wearing last night, but anyway, that's a whole different story. So let's continue on down through the ship. All right, so I'm gonna stop here for just a minute because I have a secret confession to make. Chef's table the first night, Jamie's the second night, and I definitely came to uh, Azumi the moment that it opened up at uh, 5.30 and, well, just went to town on some sushi because I love it. They do such a great job. What's very different about this particular space is in most of the other Royal Caribbean ships, the other classes of ships that do have it, they have the teppanyaki kind of hibachi style cooking. They do not have that on board this ship. They just have the sushi bar. My daughter loves the other. It's totally good, not a worry at all. I love this, so I'm pretty happy um, to do it. But once again, been, been hanging out with the sushi chefs. They're top grade, the food has been excellent, and uh, I'm probably gonna have it every single night on the cruise. Okay, so now we're headed into the Bionic Bar. The Bionic Bar debuted on the Quantum of the Seas. It was one of the coolest things I've ever seen on a cruise ship. Of course, it's incredibly gimmicky, but it's a fun gimmick. You got music pumping during the evening, and then you have robotic bartenders who are making your drinks. So you have this little iPad, you're gonna make your order there, and essentially all on the ceiling here, you have every single kind of alcohol mixer that you could possibly imagine. They've got a gun in there with all the juices um, and sodas and things like that. And so it, pure perfection, it has a perfect pour. I don't know that I love that. I personally like the bartenders that have a little heavier hand uh, to say, but once again, it's just such a novelty and a unique thing to have on a cruise ship. All right, so just past the Bionic Bar, you have the Voom Station. They're actually gonna have several of these set up throughout the entire ship. This ship, when it was launched, had the fastest internet ever at sea, and it still is today. I've been pretty impressed with it, um, I must say. Just make sure that you check with your cruise planner ahead of time. That's something that you can pre-purchase, and then on board, sometimes they'll have promotions as well. So right now, I just stepped into the excursion center. One thing that you'll find that's different, once again, a smart ship. You've got the screen here, the little iPad. You just put your card on there. It's gonna turn on. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow me to select excursions or even just get more information on the excursions. Most of the stuff on here is on the app as well. Uh, and then you're gonna have a couple people that are over here when it's open. Right now we're port day, middle of the day, um, so it's not open, but they're gonna be happy to help you with picking the perfect excursion for yourself and your family or answering any of the questions related to land-based excursions. 
Right just across from the excursions, you are gonna have the art gallery. Uh, we're not gonna go in there, I just wanted to point this out. I have clients that absolutely love Park West. Some of them that actually come on Royal Caribbean Cruises just to purchase art. Um, I've been told it's a pretty good deal. I don't know anything about it, so I can't really speak to that, but there we go. Here's my chair. The King hath arrived. Super duper excited for tonight because we are dining at Wonderland. The very first time that I dined at Wonderland was on the Quantum of the Seas. It debuted on that ship. And I remember getting the menu the first time, getting a paintbrush and some water, painting the menu to reveal what was on there. It was just a really cool way to start a meal. And uh, make sure you check out our standalone video on Wonderland. You're gonna really like it. So as we continue on, we're overlooking the Royal Esplanade, but I wanted to point out this feature. It is so cool. There's a ton of these LED lights here. There's two handprints, and I'll just read it to you. The 200 light bulbs in the chandelier glimmer to the recorded heartbeats of the past participants. To add your own heartbeat, place, the hand, place your hands on the metal pl plates for 10 seconds. After adding your own pulse, the previous recordings will be pushed up one position. So basically what we're doing now is we are sharing each other's energy. Basically, all of our heartbeats are intertwined and then it's gonna continue on the pattern. But how cool is it to personalize art like that? That's something that I absolutely love about this ship and the fact that it's a smart ship, they're able to do that. All right, so now we're headed over the bridge. They have these huge glass elevators here and the aft elevator bank. Once again, really, really beautiful. There's art that goes all the way up to the top. And once again, theme throughout this entire ship is beauty. This is one of the spots that I feel and see it the most as we're heading back towards uh, Jamie's Italian and then 270 in the rear. But they, everywhere they've had these walkways where it used to just be very you know, plain and almost boring on cruise ships, they've really gone out of their way to design every single space. You've got the art hanging down from the ceiling and then you have these massive centerpieces. Once again, great for taking photos in front of and Instagram, but also just make the whole space absolutely beautiful. All right, so now we're headed back and into Jamie's Italian. Uh, it's by Jamie Oliver, celebrity chef. You probably have all heard of him. But what's unique about this is when they created the concept, they basically negotiated in that the ingredients would come from the same suppliers in Italy. It is an absolutely delicious meal. The space, of course, is beautiful. The decoration is very modern. Um, you kind of get that, that concept that they're going for is very modern. Tuscan, I guess, but uh, even more overly modern here with all these bright yellow and blue pops. But what this is about is about the food. All the pasta is handmade. Everything is curated here very specifically for it. If you'd like to watch our video, we have a full video on this specific restaurant. Here they have a pasta machine. It's to signify that once again, every single bit of pasta that you have here is handmade. We had probably the best lasagna that I've ever had in my entire life. And then the pastas were all really, really fantastic. But uh, Desserts were pretty amazing as well. I can go on and on and on. And uh, I definitely had quite a few desserts, but anyway, let's continue along the tour. So just across from Jamie's, they have some really high-end retail. You got Bulgari and Hublot, if that's something that you uh, would like. One great thing about that, duty-free. Been told that the prices are gonna be better for you on board. Don't buy a lot of that myself, so you'll have to let me know about that. But now we're headed into Vintages. Vintages is a wine bar, as it sounds like in the description. This happens to be, in my mind, once again, the most beautiful one in the entire fleet. They've got a ton of different furniture. They've got these high tops here where they'll do large wine tastings. And then over here, you've got these beautiful stuffed couches, some love seats. And then what's also great about the space, in addition to uh, the bartenders who are amazing and all the wines that they have here, you have a massive wall of wines on tap to choose from because who doesn't want a bunch of wines on tap to choose from? Just aft of Vintages, you're gonna have Next Cruise. So Next Cruise is where you're gonna find all the information you want about your next cruise. I always recommend that my clients book this on board because you're always gonna get the best deal. Any of the promotions or deals that Royal Caribbean has out there will be combined with an additional onboard credit or savings. And then that just goes directly back to your travel agent. We love it. In fact, that's uh, one of my favorite thing in the whole wide world. It's when I wake up in the morning and uh, one of my clients has booked a cruise on board because I know that they're having an amazing time. Otherwise they wouldn't have booked another cruise on board. So it's just a really reaffirming thing for me. And I know that they get an amazing price. The next space is Cafe 270. Over here you have a little bit of overflow seating um, and there's some couches to, to my left as well. But I'm gonna take you inside the space. This is another one of the casual grab and go eateries. It's usually open on boarding day and then it's open throughout the cruise. You're gonna find some healthy options and just an array of options here. Hot sandwiches and paninis. Um, Cuban, really good, had that the other day. Over here you've got roast beef. So they have their signature uh, roast beef sandwich. Once again, might've had that the other day as well. Your soups. Then my deep, true love desserts. Can I get one of the, the cream um, caramel in the cup? Thank you so much. 
All right, I'm gonna put this over to the side here and we'll come right back to it. But as you continue along, um, you can see the menus up here. They have a breakfast menu in here. Then they have a salad menu. This is a large salad bar where they'll take, uh, also pre-made salads, they'll take them, put together and toss a salad for you. And then I'm gonna go over to the other, other favorite part, which is, well, the other desserts, as you can tell. Chocolate chip cookies are amazing. Love the fresh gooey ones upstairs. Love these as well. Haven't really found one that I don't love. Over here, you've got your condiment bar. Um, you've also got all of your silverware, and then you've got the beverage uh, space here, just exactly like all the beverage spaces throughout the ship. So I'd like to just take a minute to share with you the space that I think is the most stunning, unique, creative, beautiful, awesome space in the entire cruise industry. So this is the 270. Once again, this ship was one of the very, very first smart ships. The Quantum of the Seas was the one where this debuted. So they had these robots up there. It looks like TV screens. They show movies in here. So we watched a movie the other night here. You imagine my daughter would absolutely love that. Then the space transforms and we had Spectre's Cabaret in here last night. The entire show was so dynamic and unique because it, is, it involves every piece of the space. So people come out of the ceilings. It's set up there for all the acrobats. Over here at the bandstand, once again, that goes up and down. Where Taylor is, where I'm walking towards right now, actually comes up completely from the floor. And so people pop in and pop out and disappear. They come out of the ceiling. Um, and so the show itself is just a really, really unique show. I think it's fantastic for every member of the family. Um, I really enjoyed it. But on top of that, this space is so usable during the day. You've got the cafe just behind you so it's a eating area you've got seating all the way up and beyond you can see right here it's got this wonderful tiered seating for when you have shows in here you get great light because the entire back of the ship is uh, floor to ceiling windows and they dedicated almost I think it's three stories in here which is an incredible amount and of course the 270 degree view which uh, you know then involves the name but I just think this space is incredible and then you know of course topping it off with a bar over there in the corner. They've even encompassed the spaces where they had to put the structure in in a really, really beautiful way. But if you've never seen dancing robot TV screens, come to 270 and check it out. One little feature I wanted to point out up top is you do have balcony seating here just above, so you can enter from inside. You can also enter from the hallways outside there. And then right at the very top in the middle, you have star class reserve seating. So just another one of those great benefits that our star class guests get. There's also a couple other spaces that you may not know about in this space itself. You have the library up there, also a small internet cafe. It's a really, really quiet and relaxing place, especially during the day. You can see this place is chill in general during the day. And then on the other side, you're gonna have your portrait studio. So if you wanna get your portraits taken with your family, maybe on um, formal night or maybe just so you can have it for your Christmas card, that's a great place. Make sure that you do reserve it and pick out exactly what you want. So if you're ever looking for me, you'll find me in my throne, the aft of the ship. I mean, how cool is this? Un Believable. Beautiful. See you guys later. Good night. So on the outside of Deck 5, you're going to find all of the lifeboats. There's also um, some outdoor pavilions. This particular one right here is the uh, smoking area. And then on the other side, just outside of Jamie's, you're going to find a really nice open air, kind of like this, uh, outdoor dining. So if you like dining alfresco, that's a perfect option. Picked up a plate of cookies because, well, they're amazing at the Windjammer. And they're also amazing at 270. Mmm. 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 Yeah, I feel like they really figured out the cookie on this ship. It's a little bit gooey in the middle. The right consistency. It's not too fluffy, not too hard. Yeah, no. This is chocolate chip happiness. I'm just gonna keep going for a while. Apparently, Taylor wants one as well. There we go. Don't blame him. All right, so we're now in the aft of deck four, and I wanted to take you into the first of the two complimentary sit-down restaurants on board. There's four of them, there's two just below it. I'll show you in a minute. But up on deck four is where all of the My Time dining is going to happen. So if you select that option for your cruise, you can see over here is a line where you're gonna line up if you do not have reservations. Over here, it's where you're gonna line up if you do have reservations. And then all the way over here, um, same thing, because this is silk. So follow me on in. One thing that you'll notice is, once again, extraordinarily beautiful decor. So Silk's on my right, I'm gonna take you in there in just a minute, but first I'm gonna take you into the American Icon Grill. So when they first launched this ship class with the Quantum, Royal Caribbean did something completely different than they had ever done with any of their dining establishments. They created four very different dining establishments that had different menus. It was called Dynamic Dining, and uh, you know a lot of the royal traditionalists did not love it, so they split it out and essentially went back to the traditional dining method, which would be early seating, late seating, and my time. 
But what's cool about this ship and unique is that they kept all of the decor. So right here when I walk in, you've got this map of the entire United States on the floor. You can see Route 66 ends right by my house here in California. And then the other thing that they added with this class was these dividers. So they're very unique because they're, they're photographed. So as you walk by, you can see the photograph of what it is. Um, it also creates division within the room itself. But on top of it, you can see all the way through. So those who are over maybe in a, a booth seat all the way over on the side here, they can see through the partitions all the way out to the ocean. As you can see, this is a pretty large restaurant. I'm gonna head into the middle. Um, once again, just give you the last piece of this pure classic Americana decor. Even the, the chandeliers over here are the headlights. One thing that's super important is of course that you let Royal Caribbean know about any allergies that you might have or any special dietary needs that you have. They can accommodate just about anything and they do a really, really good job at it. So here is an example of a vegan menu. Of course, over here you've got your kids menus and then uh, over here you've got all the different languages. So it's the same exact menu, but if you're a German speaker, they've got that for you. All right, so now I'm in Silk, just across from the American Icon. Once again, same exact menu in all four of the restaurants. When this first launched, this had a really unique Asian menu. I'll be honest, I really love it, and I've lost it, so I'm just gonna have to move back into Zumi. All right, so now I'm headed down one flight of stairs. I'm on deck three, where you're gonna have the other two complimentary restaurants. So over to my right here, you have Chic. It's lavishly decorated. It's really, really beautiful, kind of a Hollywood aesthetic. And then as I head over to the other side, you have the Grand Restaurant. It feels very much like a, maybe a classic old school French restaurant. Once again, same exact menu, all four of the restaurants. If you want the traditional dining, you're gonna be down here. And if you want my time, you're gonna be upstairs. All right, so just outside the, the dining room on the Esplanade, you have another really fantastic, unique piece of interactive art. You can turn the switches on and off, but it doesn't work unless you find the golden one. So what it does is it spells out different inspirational words. It's just a really cool thing, but kids absolutely love it. And then of course, I love having anything that's interactive because it just adds to the experience. And just across, they have another really cool piece of art. This is actually uh, James Clare, 1979, and it's fireworks uh, and LED. So, very, very unique, eclectic collection of art throughout the entire ship, but I, I've never been on a ship that's more beautiful than this. So as we continue along the Royal Esplanade, you have guest services. This is the purser's desk. They're gonna handle everything to do with money on board. I highly recommend avoiding it on the very first day on board, the very last day on board if you can, get all your business done. In between, it does get a little bit crowded, but they're in there. One great thing about this ship, being a smart ship, they have handhelds where they can come through and they actually were able to solve a lot of the problems in the line before people even got to the front. Just across the way is Boleros. So Boleros is the Latin themed nightclub that they have on board all of the Royal Caribbean ships. This is where it gets super crazy and popping at night. Maybe not crazy, but uh, you know those who dance with a little bit of Latin flair. Um, and uh, well, I'm, well, I'm pretty broken. I can't dance at all right now. Uh, but you know that they have a great time. I love standing on this dance floor because I have so many memories from the quantum where, uh, you know, rocking out, having a great time. You can see there's a mix of seating all the way around. They have these huge couches. Um, a wonderful bar as well. And then as you continue all the way back, this is a great place to kind of hang out and read during the day because it's a really quiet spot, pretty good lighting, and uh, well, there's a bar. All right, so now we're heading down the Royal Esplanade. It gives you that same kind of feeling that I had for the very first time with the Royal Promenade on the Voyager class. This is once again beautiful. It's extra wider. It's quite a bit wider than that. Over here, you're gonna have the shops. So this is all your Royal Caribbean logo wear. Back there, you have the port merchants. So if you wanted to get duty-free alcohol and different things like that, they also have some sundry items in there. And then of course, Cafe Promenade right here. This is a fast casual option, grab and go. You've got wraps and sandwiches. Um, and then of course, cookies. I don't know if I've mentioned the cookies. I'm gonna head directly across the way from Cafe Promenade. So this is actually the coffee shop on board. It's not an official Starbucks. They do use the Starbucks syrup. They do sell all the Starbucks drinks for the most part. So if you need your Starbucks fix, you can have it here. But what I'm talking about is this right there. Dolce de leche eclairs, carrot cake. Wow, this just looks like a lot of happiness. Once again, it's an additional cost, but for sweets, I'll pay a little bit extra. All right, so now we are headed towards Sorrento's Pizzeria. When I hear Sorrento's, get in the, the door here, smell the pizza. What I think about is uh, maybe the vault, 2 a.m. Those of you guys who are old, old school Royal fans know exactly what it is that I'm talking about. But this is the pizza shop on board. It's open super late in the evening. I see a piece of pepperoni there with my name on it right there. Can I get a pepperoni, please? Amazing. They also have some focaccia bread, um, olive tapenade, and some different antipasto there as well that's complimentary. Of slices. Just one right now, but uh, I'll be back for more, trust me. Got the pizza ovens right there. Roll it out fresh for you, and well, 
Let's head over. I'm gonna grab a seat next to my good friend, Dean Martin. Hey, Dean, how's it going, man? All right. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so now we're headed into the Brass and Bach pub. Every single Royal Caribbean ship with a promenade has a pub on board, and it all kind of feeds, is the same exact concept. So you've got tables here. One thing that is very different about this particular one is that they do have a menu. So pub pickles, gotta say, I mean, deep fry anything, they're usually pretty good, but deep fried pickles are amazing, and then who doesn't love soft pretzels? Well, on that matter, who doesn't love lobster mac, lobster, uh, mac and cheese wedges? But anyway, right here is where you're gonna have the musician every single night. You see he's got his guitar out there. He was awesome last night. One thing that I love about this ship is that there's all kinds of different entertainment throughout the entire ship. Right here, he was actually playing Irish folk songs and uh, just any kind of music on demand, essentially, and it was fantastic. The whole bar was rocking out. You've got another mix of seating, some benches. There's also outdoor seating here as well, and then you've got the full bar. It's actually a really big space. I think it's bigger than the ones even on the uh, Voyager class and Oasis class. So as we continue along, you will see a ton of high-end retail all the way along here and then this beautiful staircase those of you who've been on board and have taken pictures you've probably taken a picture there it's really really pretty and elegant as we continue along you see now more regalia this is the fine watches retail all the way down this ship has a ton of retail on it and the ones that are in china actually have even more retail if you can imagine that as we continue along just wanted to point out this is the other entrance to the pub right here and then uh, over to the side you have some more retail this is going to be clothing prints and green and then all the way down at the end, you continue to have retail. Welcome to the Music Hall, an amazing venue that debuted on the Quantum of the Seas. I'd love for you to follow me on in. It's actually been such a successful venue that they just put it on the newly amplified Oasis of the Sea. So there's the emblem. Once again, the Rock Hall. Come on in here. The first thing that you'll notice is it is a two-story venue that is kind of a mix of, uh, of entertainment and lounge space. Down below you have a huge dance floor down there. There's stadium seating all the way around the entire space. It's got this really, really beautiful stairway that goes down, all LED backlit here. And then as we continue along, you see this is the other part of the balcony right there. You've got the full bar on both sides. And then one unique feature about this is you have pool tables. It's not quite the same as the ones on the Radiance class that have the gyro. These are just standard pool tables. So when we were moving last night, it was moving around just a little bit. But once again, a fantastic venue. It's used for everything from karaoke um, to they had the Journey cover band last night. So once again, that to me, that's what cruising is all about. It's just rocking out to the songs that you know, fun. So everybody out there on the dance floor. And then there's all kinds of other activities that they'll have in here throughout the cruise. So now we're headed into the Diamond Club. It's a fantastic space on board. It does have windows looking out. And then I just came in from the Music Hall, which they use as overflow as well, especially when you've got quite a few Diamond members on a cruise like you do on this one. But once again, this is before the first cocktail hour. That's what it's all about in here is being social, getting to hang out, relax, have a good time. Met all kinds of unique and interesting people over the years. And so as we continue on in, just wanted to point out the concierge desk here. So the Diamond concierge will sit there. They'll help you with all kinds of restaurant reservations. In fact, just around the corner there, they have all of the different menus. They also can assist you with any of the activities on board the ship, um, maybe even Coco Cay as well, or even your shore excursions. So another fantastic feature is each evening they're gonna have food in here, also have continental breakfast and things like that set up in the morning, and then of course you have the espresso maker where you can make espresso any time of day. All right, so just outside the music hall is the entrance to the Casino Royale, at least one side of the entrance to the Casino Royale. So it's exactly what it sounds like, it's a casino. They have a large assortment of different uh, games. So over here you're gonna see all the classic slot machines. Um, they have a, an assortment of different uh, from Penny, all the way on up and then as we continue on and we go around the corner here you're going to see the different table games that they have once again all of the classics you're going to have three card poker blackjack may have played a little bit of uh, ultimate texas hold on the other night always fun craps roulette um, one thing that you do need to know is that this is a smoking casino they do allow smoking in here if it's something that you're very sensitive to it may be tough for you to utilize the space but just something you may want to keep in mind but as we continue on through, you can see there is the large casino bar and the poker table. This was my favorite spot on the Quantum of the Seas. I love that they have old school hand dealt poker still. Some of the different cruise lines have switched over to the machines and they take such a high rake and it goes so quick that it's not really as enjoyable to me as playing uh, with somebody dealing it. So as we continue on through to the other side, we get into the area where it's non-smoking, uh, just on this side more slot machines and things like that. So once again, if you're sensitive to that, you may want to move over to this part of the casino. And then of course, you know, who doesn't like the uh, 
the games of chance that uh, are always sitting on the edge and you never quite get to any which way. First off, congratulations and thank you so much for watching the entire video with us. We love the Anthem of the Seas. Hopefully you can see how incredibly beautiful she is and what an amazing time that we've had on board and we know that you will as well. We are your luxury cruise experts, so when you're ready to book that suite on board this ship or any in Royal Caribbean's fleet, reach out to Heart Travel. We have an amazing relationship with Royal Caribbean. We know that we can help create the vacation of a lifetime for you and your family at an